Thank you. All right. Thanks very much for uh, coming and uh, listening to my um, demonstration. Um, it's entitled What Goes Up Must Come Down. Um, and using uh, Raspberry Pis uh, and uh, STM32 uh, and an um, ESP32 as well um, to track, uh, locate, um, find, then reuse weather balloons. Um, the, uh, this was inspired to um, as part of a lockdown project um, by um, a chap on the on YouTube called Andreas Spice. I don't know how many people follow him um, on, from this community, but I'd thoroughly recommend um, what uh, what he gets up to. Um, it's, it's very uh, broadly uh, technical, but um, an awful lot of detail. And uh, he's a guy with a Swiss accent, and he's got a um, very pleasingly dry sense of humour. Um, so uh, it probably was around about, or maybe just over a year ago, uh, he did a program. Um, or a, a YouTube video about locating weather balloons. And um, as a radio amateur, that really caught my eye. Um, and, uh, and so I started off following it. This led me into a number of different steps. I wouldn't really want to call it a project um, because that suggests it was planned. It sort of evolved um, with a number of um, uh, parts to it. Um, most of which were uh, new to to me. So learning was a case of researching, finding where, where we needed to, what, what I needed to do, how I needed to do it. So I wouldn't take this as a, an example of how you should do it, um, just how that it could be done. And I'm sure there are better ways um, and smarter ways of doing it um, uh, if I was to do it again. So if, if people have got suggestions on on things that I did or I did, and I could do it differently. Um, I think I'd really appreciate that. Um, it would be quite useful to see. So uh, the uh, the video showed him um, using a Raspberry Pi to track um, the weather balloons, um, and, and and sent us off to this website. So what is a weather balloon? Um, typically, uh, in the United Kingdom, they are, um, as you say, uh, helium balloons that are launched by the, uh, the, the meteorological office. Um, and it always struck me as this, this was quite a, an old fashioned thing to be doing on the days of radar um, and, uh, and satellites, that the idea of having uh, weather balloons would be quite obsolete. But this website takes you to um, uh, a map of weather balloons that are being received by um, amateurs, uh, amateur weather um, uh, people, uh, and this is a live update as to where, where the balloons are at the moment. So um, nothing in the UK, but if we zoom in, um, Germany seems to have let, let four go. Um, and if you click on one of them, it's got a unique serial number, a frequency that it's transmitting on, uh, how long ago it was last reported. Um, it's doing 81, mile, 81 kilometers an hour, uh, and it's at 8,000 meters. Um, eight kilometers high, so and it's still rising. So uh, this website's got lots of other things in there. Um, so you, what, you can, what you can do is you can click on here, uh, show, uh, show a map of the, um, they're called radio sons, um, radio transmitters um, in the last 48 hours. Um, and the website, is quite overloaded so we just have to bear with it while we load the data and zoom in but if you just really want to get an example as to how busy this airspace is um we can zoom in and see oh let's, let's zoom out to the uk um and it's the, the website's a little bit laggy um it shows how many we um, weather balloons are being launched on a daily basis so uh um, if I select my local, uh, I'm down near Brighton, um, there's the uh, observatory at Hurstman, so, and just around the corner from there, there is a, um, a Met office where they launch, uh, they, they take all the readings, plus also launch balloons. So that, that it got me inspired. So I thought, I wonder if I could receive those. So this website um, gives you a... Uh, uh, 
directions on on how to do this. Um, so if you uh, if you log in, um, you can go and use their what they call K KXY track software, uh, and the website it gives you all the information you need um, how to configure and tune the uh, the, the, the the settings, uh, and then you press the download button. Um, and it prevent, presents you with an image um, of, uh, of a Raspberry Pi, which you can then um, etch onto your um, SD card and install. So I've got a, a I, I did that. I've got a Raspberry Pi up in the loft. Um, and so it, we just open up a picture of it. Here's my one. Uh, it's uh, Model 3, I think, um, and that uses um, a USB SDR receiver. Now, I don't know if people know that, know what these are. Um, they originated, the people started hacking uh, digital television uh, USB receivers to be able to make them, tune them to other frequencies. These have become quite popular. And so uh, there are now companies making them specifically for the radio um, community. Um, New Elec is one of the most popular, uh, and they come in at around about twenty pounds. Um, it's a gateway into a, a, a whole new world if you're not really, if you're not interested, in, if you're not aware of radio. Um, getting these um, and just having a, a, a play. There's lots to be tuned into. Uh, particularly sensors, um, garage doors, um, car tire sensor, car car tire uh, pressure sensors. Um, there's lots out there, um, and the advantage is that you know there's lots of it's digital, and lots of it can be tweaked and, and um, explored using Raspberry Pis. Um, so in order to be able to listen to the balloons, uh, this, you hear uh, this strange wire contraption that's next to it is a homemade antenna. Um, for those who know about radios, this, the, the balloons are transmitting on 404 megahertz, which is in the uh, what they call the UHF ultra high frequency band. Um, so therefore the aerial is quite small. Um, the spec I got from a, uh, a website uh, gave the, 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 the lengths, and I believe it was about 11 centimeters uh, from from the from the base to the the top of the antenna, and then you can see there are four radials uh, uh, coming out of the out of that, uh, and it's all connected via a, a chock block um, a cable connector. So it's a very small aerial, and I was very very surprised to discover that this small uh, aerial and Raspberry Pi in my loft. Could potentially pick up these um, weather balloons uh, about 200 kilometers. Um, it's, it's quite significant, but then they are very high up in the air, and uh, there's, they are line of sight. There's nothing between me and the uh, weather balloons, um, so uh, so it makes the signal very good, um, very receivable. So let's. Uh, VNC into my um, Raspberry Pi. Um, it's got uh, a load of configuration set up, um, and it all comes pre-configured. Uh, you can you can then go in and tune these and make some uh, amendments about, with the frequencies and calibrations, etc. Uh, but it's all set up and done for you. Uh, and once it's running. Leaving it overnight, um, it runs all the time, but it, the, the, the weather balloons around uh, where I live generally come out about um, one o'clock in the morning. You start to get packets of information coming through. Um, so if we, if we look at this one here, the last packet, um, that, well, that's what it's, its serial number, um, its latitude and its longitude. It was at 13,000 meters high. 13 kilometers. It was traveling at 110 miles and uh, kilometers an hour. And that's some directions. It's got the, um, and then it's got the, some pressure sensing sensors, temperature sensors, 
uh, and other information that's built into the packets. Um, and that's all very useful for the weather reporters, but but also what we do is we th this this website um, or this uh, Raspberry Pi setup that then presents the information on a map. Um, and so if I click on my location here, I can then mouse over to where that weather balloon was. Um, so this one here was last night uh, and it was 208 kilometers away. I can't I can't mouse over it. It's, it's that it's that bit here because it moves when I point when I point to it. But um, yes, yeah, 211 kilometers, which for a, for a small radio transmitting um, very low power. Um, again, for people who are interested, it's around 60 milliwatts. Um, it's a probably the same sort of power as your cordless phones at home. Um, 200 kilometers is phenomenal um this would then website then this raspberry pi server then uploads the information that it's received to the um sq6 kxy website um and then there's uh, and then we share share the information so that was the first introduction into it um the next thing i, I thought was well, how do we then, if there was one landing near you, how do we find it? So one of the problems is, as I say, if you're up very, very far uh, up, up, in the, up in the sky, the signal travels a long way. The closer you get to the ground, the signal stops. So if, for example, we open up uh, a user panel, um, Raspberry uh, songs that I've received in the or seen in the last 24 hours. We scroll down here uh, and this gives a, gives a table of where it was and the last reports it was received. So this last this one was last received at, at, at the, the altitude of 76 meters. Um, and what happens is that um, you know I can get the location and you could go to this grid reference to see if you could find it. However, it's still moving at 31 kilometers an hour. So it's going to be close, but it's going to be quite difficult to find. So the next step is to produce, is to um, create a, um, a local receiver. Uh, and that's another um, project called My Sondi Go. So let's take the... Um, the camera down to uh, to this little device. It's using a a, a TT Go uh, ESP32. Uh, it's um, a LoRa gateway um, or LoRa node um, device. So it comes with a little radio receiver. It's got a um, four hundred and thirty three megahertz receiver. Um, it's got a Wi Fi. Uh, and it's got Bluetooth in, built in as well. Um, and what, what what this does is I then put it into a, into a case and installed some TTGO software. Um, and once it's uh, once it's initialized, it'll then sit and listen to the frequency um, that that, are, that that the balloon is going to be at. And so even when it's landed. You can you can walk around. It's got a, a range of about a mile or so, so you can get to the nearest vicinity, um, and uh, and then use this to identify the exact location of where it is, and then you get a little bit of a treasure hunt. So you can then search the uh, go off searching around the bracken and the um, and the countryside, and sometimes occasionally the. Um, uh, uh, around town to see if you can locate it. So here's a couple of photographs um, of the, the application. So here's the MySondi Go running and it's connected via Bluetooth to the um, uh, an application on your phone. Um, and it's currently, this one here is currently saying there's no data. Um, here we have a, a balloon that uh, was loc was located. The balloon has burst, so it's it's pretty much uh, in shreds. 
it's got a parachute that it comes down on and then here's the little uh radio on transmitter uh and sensors in this polystyrene box uh here's a picture of uh we had a bit of a race as somebody else was also trying to find the same uh, radio sonde uh, and although we got there at the same time he had a, a a nine meter pole in order to be able to pull it down from the tree uh there's a picture of, of, of one of these balloons being launched um and i'm not sure whether we can uh, whether we're, how, how visible this is going to be but this was a little clip of the first balloon i found and as you can see, the little piece of string uh, runs off into the hills, uh, hills into the trees uh, to, uh, and then it's a case of follow the piece of string uh, and see if you can locate it. Is that coming through? So now we've got a, um, sond what is it so there's a so the, the met office consider these to be disposable uh the radio sond equipment is the property of the uh the met office and is no longer required uh and then contact this number for instructions on how to dispose of it so it's a polystyrene box um it's got a very small um sensor but are very fine sensors on the end here uh, and they're, they're they're purposely uh a long way away from these devices from the from the the, the electronics to maintain um uh temperature and pressure shield but and also the polystyrene box is to protect the batteries uh and the electronics from the very low temperatures um of, of typically when it's at up to 35 to 40,000 meters, that's 40 kilometers high, the temperatures are around about six, minus 60 degrees Celsius, um, and the batteries would stop working very quickly. So uh, the insulation is required to, um, to, to, to stop it from, um, from freezing. It's got a, a very small um, RFID um, uh, aerial, so that it can be programmed while it's still in the box. It runs on two AA batteries, uh, and then there's a GPS uh, and some other, other sensors um, on the uh, on the board. Um, and considering these these are, are disposable, I think it's really nice. So going out and finding them is is is, is quite often a challenge. The the, the weather reports depending on which way the wind is blowing i'll check that in the morning and think oh there's some um some treasure hunting to be found and then off with off you go into the countryside so what do you do once you've once you've actually uh found one well as a radio ham i thought what can i do um searching around there are some web pages which are um sp uh, specifically uh code written for the um for the for, for converting these into uh radio ham use obviously you need to be licensed to uh to allow them to be able to, to, to transmit on on licensed frequencies but once you've got that um there's quite a lot of fun to be had so this was the next step was learning how to program um an sdm32 uh, it's a, a chip that I hadn't previously come across. I've done a little bit of Arduino programming uh, using the uh, simple Arduino uh, GUI. I then tried running the um, this code or compiling it on uh, uh, open uh, virtu virtual um, uh, the Microsoft one, uh, which the name escapes me. Visual visual compiler something like that and i couldn't get it to work so finally uh installed it on a raspberry pi and uh, or uploaded it onto raspberry pi and used the um the compiler on that um because it's the same compiler there's, there's the same processor there's no need to cross compile it worked um a treat you end up getting a uh, 
uh, bin file, which you can then download from the Raspberry Pi and then upload using um, some software called uh, STM, STM link. So it's selecting the open the file, select, select the bin file or the hex file, and then you've got, I think, a uh, compiled um, code, which then can be uploaded. Now that in itself creates another problem. So we get back to the camera. We've got a, um, a, a 10 pin uh, socket on the bottom of this, which turns out that it is a two millimeter um, pitch. All the other sockets that I could find were 2.4 millimeters or something's coming like that. Um, and I couldn't find anything to, to connect into it. Now, I subsequently found out it's an amphenol socket and you can buy them, but they're, they're, they're while they're not expensive, it's, it's, it's they, the places that, I've, that sell them are around about um, sort of 10 or 15 pounds postage and packing and FedExing and things. So I ended up uh, bodging it by getting some normal uh, pins, um, removing the plastic header, uh, insulating it, and then I can then just about connect it onto the bottom of there without, um, without them uh, 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 touching. As I, it's a bit of a pain in the backside, but as I'm only doing it a couple of times, it's, I considered it's worthwhile. So once you've got it, the code uploaded and configured. Um, I've got one here and it's sitting there um, it, it, and it's flashing. You'll probably just be able to see the, the screen flashing, the little LED. So it, this one's now sitting there and transmitting its location. So back to the good old Raspberry Pi. Um, and we've got one here. Um, so let's open up the um, let's BNC to that and open up uh, some software. I've got a another uh, RTL SDR receiver. So it's just a, a USB radio receiver that is then connected to the back of the Pi and then some software called uh, GQRX, um, which is then tuned to the, to, the, to the frequency. And it's then showing you a little graph of the signal against um, frequency uh, real time and then there's what they call a little waterfall um, which then gives it it gives you a little history so you can view what's going on now it's not particularly easy to see so let's switch back to the screen and uh, and as you can see uh, there's there's loads of configuration in here you can you you could tune it to uh, magic fm or whatever you want to do to get you through the afternoon um, but this particular frequency allows you to view um, the the transmissions from the uh, what was it? Interesting, it's over there. Um, to view the transmissions from the uh, radio sound. So that's why I'm, I'm slightly off frequency. So four three two point five megahertz. Uh, and as you can see, it's, it's transmitting little bursts of data every 25 seconds or so. So there's, there, there's a little burst. And there's, then you can just see the history um, of that uh, um, transmission. So what, how, how do we, what, what can we then do with that data? So the, the, the software that's been uploaded is, is set up to configure to transmit in a uh, an amateur radio format called uh, a, a FSK amateur frequency shift keying, which means the frequency changes as the um, as as with ones or noughts. It's a bit like an old fashioned uh, modem when you used to listen to the that was um, transmitting ones and noughts using different frequencies. So by analysing that, this software then picks up those the data and converts it into a text. So as you can see, it's now picking up 
packets of data every 25 seconds or so. Um, and if we zoom into some of the just the, 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 the easiest bits to view, its latitude um, north and its longitude west is being transmitted. Uh, and then that, that uh, this radio, the radio sonde could then be moved around. It could be given to a scout um, on a night hike um, who, who are off roaming the, 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 the countryside. Um, and the scout organizers can sit there and watch, watch them, make sure they don't get lost. Um, applications we have used in the past also is for putting them on ambulances uh, so that you, you know where, where the ambulances are um, and which one is the next easiest one to, to, to locate and deploy. So as I'm building up a little collection of these, um, we're testing them, uh, checking the range, um, and then wondering whether you know, this is something that we can use um, as a freebie, uh, recycling these um, lovely little devices that fall out of the air. Um, so that's a quick whiz through of, of you know, the, my evolution of um, watching something on YouTube uh, and then learning lots of things um, from, um, from, from the internet to get me to a um, almost working functional tracking device. Okay, that probably wraps it up. Um, I did fly through some of the bits, um, but if there are if there is time for questions, um, is there anything? Yeah, we have some time for questions, Nick. If anyone has any? Yeah, uh, if if I can jump in, um, in really interested in the SDR and using is it GQRX? I mean, is that pretty straightforward? Um, that one, GQRX is very straightforward. I think it was just um, a sudo apt install command um, to install that from the from the uh, uh, the trusted uh, repository. Um, and then the the, the, the uh, USB devices themselves, uh, you can get them from um, from Amazon for twenty to thirty pounds, or there is a website called rtl-sdr.com. Um, and they provide their own, um, and I think they're a little bit cheaper, but you'd have to wait a few weeks for them to turn up. I mean, I, what I'm actually thinking about is essentially trying to use it as a kind of um, spectrum analyzer. Yes, you could. Um, certainly for just, you know, for, 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 if, if, if identifying frequencies, um, uh, what's happening where, it's a very good way. Um, and for, of, um, of, of seeing where the activity is on, a, on a, an amateur radio band, for example. So um, um, sorry. Yeah, so I was also going to say I've, I've started using di some digital modes on, um, on a, uh, using the Raspberry Pi so that uh, I've got some, uh, a long wire um, stretching across the garden. Uh, and using this this the same uh, RTL SDR uh, device, uh, I've been picking up signals in um, Mongolia, the Philippines, and America, uh, just using this a Raspberry Pi and uh, an IKEA uh, washing line. Oh, very cool. So does that does that uh, version or is that um, board you have? Does that have a version number on it? Just curious about how many versions they've been through. Uh, sorry, which board? The, the board on the, uh, the, the weather balloon one. All right. Yes. Um, Just wonder how many, how many, how many versions they had to go to get something that actually worked well. <laughs> well, this is a, a um, the, the the website for the com for the for the, um, the company that makes them uh, is Vasala. The Radio Sonde RS seventy one, um, and all the spec is on the back there. So it is a com big commercial um, uh, project. Uh, I don't know where people are in the UK, but um, they, you know, the right they let them go two or three times a day off Salisbury Plain, um, and they use those for for the, for the knowing the wind direction and humidity etc for tracking and predicting the the, um, the paths of artillery. Um, <laughs> find, you know, feed all the information into a computer and then they, uh, it'll uh, predict where the shells are going to land. 
didn't realize we're firing off lots of artillery lately. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've got to keep, practice, keep the practice in. So if, if these things are flying at several thousand meters, how do they keep them out of the way of planes? Well, oh, my question. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, they, 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 they publish their location. So it's, um, you know, they're, they're easily trackable. But also, they're traveling at 40,000 meters, which is, mm -hmm. you know, a, 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 an aircraft is 40, well, 25,000, 35,000 feet. Yeah. So it's so, it's significantly higher. Yeah. <clears throat> and do they ever lose them entirely? Like, they must have cases where the batteries stop working or whatever. Yes, they are. Um, that, that most of the um, balloons that are launched from the UK end up in the sea. Um, it's only fairly rarely that when the weather's um, blowing them in the in the from the east to the west that it's worthwhile chasing them in the UK. So, how many times a week do you do this? You go out every week, or do you? Uh... Uh, I've I've been out to find them about six times in the last year. Um, I, I've, I monitor the website every probably every day. Um, just to see whether there's going to be anything worth getting up for in the morning. Well, that's a very quirky hobby. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Very nerdy and quirky. I love it. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Any other questions? I've got oh. just one silly thing here. Um, uh, I mean, this, this obviously has an interest from the point of view of somebody wanting to send a signal out to track a particular object uh, remotely, um, but I assume that the actual range, if you get near the ground, starts to become quite an issue. Yes. Um, so for tracking um, some, something that's traveling on the ground and uh, you know, radio amateurs are not allowed to, to transmit um, while flying, um, the range is very, very much limited. Um, I don't know how much you know about amateur radio, but there is a network of repeaters that when they receive the signals, um, will then rebroadcast them or share them onto a, uh, a portal. Um, there's a website called uh, APRS.FI, um, which is the, the portal for storing um, amateur radio uh, locations. And, and to be honest, it's not just amateur radio. Um, so here's my location here, G1GRW. Um, there, are, there's, there are weather stations that are sharing their information. Um, if we go back six hours, we can see people moving around. Um, but also, we, we may well be able to see ships, um, yeah, ships' locations being reported. So... Yes, well, the, well, the, the range of these is is restricted. Um, these gateways dotted around the, U, the the UK, provided by radio amateurs, um, will help with the um, the consolidation of, of that data. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It's very uh, yeah, I really like that one. Very quirky and nerdy. My Definitely. Favorite.